Okay. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Let's hear it. <laughs> that was pathetic. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I made it here. You guys made it here. Act a little more excited than that, please. Thank you. No, not yet. Save that for the after party. All right, so today we're going to talk about Ruby Core for tender feet. No, I don't mean Aaron, but, <laughs> well, kind of. Uh, no, today we're going to talk about, uh, so contributing to open source has been kind of a theme of this conference. There was, you know, a few talks about it so far. Uh, but we're going to talk about specifically uh, Ruby Core, and I want to talk about these four main things. Uh, newcomers, progress support, some things I've been working on. Uh, working with the team and roadmap with some stuff we have going on. I know Koichi covered a lot of the technical details. I'm just going to cover some of the things that I think are important, uh, not just specifically Ruby Core, but just things that affect everyone and uh, we should be concerned about. And I'm Zach. Uh, chilled. I kind of need notes, I guess. All right, so yeah, I don't want to focus on like the technical details. This isn't going to be a very technical talk, so hopefully ease into your morning with some some information to help you. Uh, we're gonna we're not going to cover how to run the test suite in Ruby or like you know really contributing guidelines or like uh, you know uh, how to how to report a bug. I think uh, Shabbatasan's talk, uh, his lightning talk yesterday, covered that pretty well, and a lot of that information is already available on the internet. Uh, and if you weren't around for Shabbatasan's uh, uh, talk, his slides are online on speakerdeck.com/hsbt. Uh, so check that out. Now I, I really want to focus on, you know, what I've been learning from Ruby Core and 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 what we can learn from each other and work together to, you know, to contribute. So our intended audience is definitely newcomers. Uh, I think there's a lot of people in here uh, that probably haven't uh, contributed to uh, Ruby itself, and I want to change that. Um, there'll be more later on this, uh, but let's let's briefly talk about what I mean. Um, you know, maybe some of you, you know, I think Brent, Brendan did like a show of hands of how many people have contributed to open source and, or have their own pet projects in open source and that's great. Um, but specifically I'm talking about someone that's like, like I really want to focus on people who maybe have an idea of something they want to do with Ruby, they want to work on, but they're not really sure, you know, like how to do that, like how to, how to collaborate with us and like I want to give you basically the confidence to do that. Um, and so that's what we're going to basically, that's, that's our goal. By the end of this talk, I want you to have the confidence to work with Ruby. So everyone has to start somewhere and uh, you know, some of the things that I've been working on, uh, specifically Ruby has been uh, working on finding new Contributors, uh, onboarding people, you know, adding adding new core committers, um, and helping them, uh, you know, learn the ropes and like fix fix some patches and stuff in Ruby. Uh, was working on maintaining 187 and 192 with Terence from Heroku, uh, but that's that's going to come to an end. Actually, we're going to make an announcement really soon, and hopefully, like, just kill that by the end of next month. It was supposed to be this month, but just been like busy with stuff. Uh, and definitely, like, one of the more important things which doesn't get a lot of um, appreciation, I think, or at least, like, uh, is security announcements. Like, these are super important. Whether or not, like, there's vulnerability, like, uh, teaching people, you know, like, what's, what, how their applications might be affected by Ruby and, or the things that Ruby's built upon. Um, it's really important stuff, and I want to, I've been working on that as well. Uh, I also joined uh, the Rails, uh, the Rails team. I earned commit bit to Rails. Uh, that was that was big, important news for me. 
I've been working on fixing a lot of regressions, helping get like 406 out and 412, um, and contributing documentation, mainly helping people who want to contribute and have patches like clean it up so it's acceptable and get it merged in, basically. Um, and basically just anything Rails. Uh, so I'm, one of, I'm actually one of three people that have uh, commit to Rails and Ruby and now Sinatra too, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> Uh, but I, I do have plans like to, to work on these things. Like I have been working on this stuff. Uh, me, you know, me and Constantine have uh, delusions of grandeur for what Sinatra 2 should look like. And there's been some code written. And we're definitely going to use bacon. <laughs> like the three other people that were at the bar last night when we were having like this <laughs> intense debate about like our spec versus mini tests might understand that one if they still remember. <laughs> Between that and like Keith's magic tricks, but he's all out of flame, so. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I've been, I've been traveling a lot, I made it here. I also went to South Africa, gave a talk. Uh, I went to the Philippines. Basically just follow uh, Winston around and like get him coffee and stuff. It's really great. I fucking love you, Winston. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, man. This is great. <laughs> so uh, we want to talk about different types of contributors. I kind of brushed on like what, what kind of, uh, you know, what we're targeting and newcomers. We talked about the beginner and, or ent I guess entry level or whatever you would call it. Um, but there's also, you know, there's engineers out, out there, there's engineers in this audience, definitely people who have like way more experience than even I do. Um, as I saw like with the, the Elixir Erlang talk yesterday, I had no idea what the hell like, I was talking about, but it sounded really cool. <laughs> So how do we convince people like that to, to like give up on Elixir and come back to Ruby and actually use that amazing knowledge they have? Because <laughs> really, like, you can do that stuff with Ruby. I mean, you generally don't, but <laughs> somebody out there uses flip-flops. So someone needs to maintain that. But above all else, you know, Everyone here is a contributor to Ruby in one way or another. And if you're not yet convinced, I have a plan right now to, to turn you all into contributors in one way or another. And I need two things. First, I need everyone to stand up. <laughs> and then I need Aaron. <laughs> Where's Aaron? <laughs> He's pooping. <laughs> oh no, bad timing. <laughs> All right. We have time. I don't have a whole lot of slides. Just keep standing. <laughs> I'm going to drink some coffee. <laughs> is, he, is he really pooping? That would be ridiculous. <laughs> I think I saw him leave, but I was like, that wasn't him, it was some other guy. <laughs> yo, maybe I should yo him. I'm gonna yo him. No internet, yo needs internet. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's tender love. Everyone should yo Aaron right now. If you have yo, yo at tender love. There he is. You know what today is? Friday. It's freaking Friday. Let's do this. <laughs> who's, who's got a camera? There's, there's a camera. Thank you. <laughs> All right, seems like everyone's ready. Yeah, so you're all a part of this community now and you're all contributors to Ruby because 
And not only did you do that, but you're here. You came to this conference. You, you know, you company helped sponsor this thing. That's 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 what that's how this stuff happens. It's great. Uh, we talked about different types of contributors. Uh, what about the actual people on the team? Uh, Want to introduce you to some of them, and so you have an idea of what you're actually getting into, right? So, I want to break it down into basically three main categories. There's companies, uh, either for profit or not. There's employees, full timers, part timers, uh, hobbyists. Even I guess you could consider their weekend job, uh, Ruby. And then there's Matt's. <laughs> He's in a league of his own, that guy. He doesn't even, Shabbat-san had a slide, it was like, who, who works on Ruby? And it's like, Matt's? No. <laughs> uh, I still count him, because he, I mean, he kind of, kind of like answers Skype calls sometimes and stuff. Uh, but if we break it down into these four groups, uh, like the main companies that, that we see on the team are, uh, you know, GitHub, Cookpad, Heroku. Uh, there's some people in Red Hat with Commit, and of course AT and T hires like three full-time employees. And <laughs> uh, we have from the left, Tender Love. Uh, <laughs> Kinta Murata san, and that's Nobu with a beer. If you can, he works at Heroku. Nobody really knows that guy, though. Uh, yeah, and then we have Matts. You know, which without him, Ruby wouldn't wouldn't be possible. We wouldn't have any of this stuff, really. Uh, so that's great. Um, but you know, there's a lot of people on the team. Um, not. Not just those guys, not just those companies. They definitely contribute a lot, and what they do is is a great uh, help to the to the language and the community. Um, but we have these people that you can rely on, and since Ruby has grown to uh, this level of maturity as it is, uh, so so is the code base, and it's grown drastically. And there's like a ton of libraries and a ton of code in there that that we we have to maintain. And so it, basically, we break it down. Uh, certain people have have taken over gems in the standard library and they maintain them. And those are the go-to people for like certain problems, right? And so it's important to recognize who works on what and how to get a hold of them. And that's really, uh, you know, depending on what you want to touch in, in the language, uh, that's really the place to go. Um, outside, of, outside of library land, um, like Koichi is the, knows a lot about garbage collection, so like if you have a, a question about performance stuff, you, you'd, you'd want to go to him, or like, uh, you know, or you could go to Nari. Um, but there's, you know, there, there's lots of people on the team. I think there's like almost 100 committers at this point. Not all of them are active, but they all have like their place in the team for sure. Um, and, and what they really, you know, they really help us uh, maintain the important parts and help others in understand why certain things exist. You know, when you take ownership of something, you know, you kind of have to know why it's there and why it's important. Whether or not, you know, there's a better gem out there or whatever, uh, doesn't matter. It's still in the language and we still have to work on it and, like, make it better. Uh, for, so for the last few years now, uh, we've been releasing pretty steadily, like once a year, and we've been doing this like minor version bump thing on Christmas. That's really great. Um, it's very semantic. Uh, it's Christmas-driven development. <laughs> Uh, but our main focus is making Ruby better each year. Each version is better than the last, right? And we want to encourage you to use those versions in your applications, when testing Ruby, when you know considering uh, things. You should definitely uh, be forward thinking, and if possible, definitely use trunk whenever, whenever you can, even in production. Like, it's <laughs> my best advice for you. But, uh, you know, this requires a lot of communication and given, you know, the separation of, of team members and location and region and stuff, this is, this is kind of an issue. Uh, one way we solve this is we have uh, semi-regularly uh, developer meetings. So we schedule these um, whenever possible. There is one uh, coming up 
Shabbat is on his computer or else I'd ask him. Uh, there, is, there is one coming up for like feature, uh, there's like a feature uh, developer meeting where you, you can submit any feature requests you want to make in. I'm pretty sure this hasn't happened yet. Uh, but uh, so if you have like a feature you want to submit to Ruby, uh, you know, you can submit it and then, you know, put it in the agenda for this meeting and we'll, t we'll discuss it and basically, uh, you know, the, it ultimately comes down to Matt's um, if it's a hard decision in any case. Uh, so he gets to be like yes or no and it's a great way to get, uh, you know, instant feedback uh, because we sit down, whoever is available, whoever we need in the, in the meeting depending on what is going to be discussed and basically go over uh, this stuff and make decisions and uh, to, you know, try to scope the next version of Ruby. It's very, uh, you know, we, we use these meetings to kind of track, track our progress and plan, and plan things ahead of time. Um, we, we also have uh, Ruby Kaigi, which is like an annual uh, j uh, conference in Japan um, that it's very, uh, very important for us to get everyone together and this year it's going to be in September, and you should definitely go. Uh, tickets aren't on sale yet, I don't think. Um, but as soon as I do, you should grab one. It sells out pretty fast. Um, and it's not as expensive as, like, WWDC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a good joke for that. I wish I did. Uh, but the best part about it is we do this thing called Committers versus the World. And what this is, is like a live Q&A session where we take a stage roughly this size and we sit everyone down in chairs and then you guys ask them questions and they answer them. It's like a great, it's a great, great deal. <laughs> but it's, a, it's, it's another way to get instant feedback and, you know, pick our brains and f figure out what, you know, what you're interested in and ask us questions like, when are we going to move to Git? or whatever, and Matt's can like dodge them. It's pretty funny to see. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, a lot of people are worried about this language barrier thing. And the good thing about the, the, like the Q&A session in Kaigi is all the, all the Japanese talks, including that, uh, have translators as of last year uh, to English. So even if you're not fluent in Japanese, uh, you can still go and like uh, you can ask questions in English and it's fine. Like uh, it's it's a it's a great uh, it's a great time. Uh, but people people still worry about this outside of this context, right? In the mailing list and stuff. And so I want to kind of I want to kind of touch base on this. <laughs> you know, as 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 you know, uh, we have we have a lot of Japanese. Uh, people on the team, and not all of them uh, speak great English. And uh, so you kind of you kind of wonder, like most of the internal discussions that they that take place between them uh, are definitely in Japanese. Like they don't revert to English just because they're talking about something important in Ruby. They use their natural language, and that's fine. Like they should just be able to communicate however they want. Um, but when it comes to public-facing stuff, you know. We're getting better at like you know translating this stuff, having someone take notes at the meetings so that we get an English version available on the for other committers that couldn't make the meeting and get everyone synced on the same page. I think this is really important. Not everyone speaks uh, Japanese, um, and they they've been doing a great job at the at the translations, and so that's really good to see. Uh, still, I've been uh, I've been doing my best to learn about the culture so that I can help, uh, help with the team and, and understand things better. And I've been trying to improve my Japanese skills. It's really hard. I've been studying for like a year now and I knew enough to, to copy that kanji down. <laughs> that, that one I didn't draw. The first time I tried to draw Go, I was like, it's terrible. <laughs> it's like, Fuck this. <laughs> I can't write kanji yet. Uh, but I can definitely type it, which is important. Uh, so I do have a shortcut for learning the language. Um, and as you'll see, it basically comes down to the more beer I have, the more Japanese I know. <laughs> Those are supposed to be beer bottles, I guess. <laughs> uh, so f funny story, I was actually... Uh, I was in Japan uh, for Oedo Kaigi and Sasa, uh, Sasadake. Koichi's 
Koichi's wedding party. And uh, getting to the point where I can like kind of figure stuff out, right? And I was like working in this cafe with a few friends and I was just like drinking coffee all day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I really had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and so like I went to the, went, went, went to the bathroom and there was like a sign on the door and it was like all in kanji. And I was like, oh, this must be important. But the other bathroom uh, didn't have a sign. So I was like, oh, what could this mean? But the other bathroom was the woman's bathroom. And I wasn't confident like going in there. I was like, I don't know the culture if that's like kosher or whatever. So I went in there, I did my business, and uh, I went to go flush the toilet and it didn't freaking flush. <laughs> so I just like walked out of there ashamed and like never went back. I was like, no, I can never go to that place again. <laughs> They're gonna remember that guy that didn't read the sign. <laughs> I don't know why that's relevant, but. <laughs> <laughs> the trials and tribulations of, of me, I guess. Uh, so moving right along, I, uh, I wanna help make uh, you to avoid making the same mistakes that I have, definitely don't do that. If you see a sign on the door, like, and you don't understand it especially, like, don't go in there. Just don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so when we're working with Ruby Core, uh, I want to provide you some some great tips to to getting your point across and and how to how to connect with us, how to really get your point across. And the first step is open a ticket. You would be surprised how many people forget this step, and it's like, well, did you do anything about it? You're just like tweeting at me about this, like I have no idea what you're talking about right now. And uh, it's a it's super important step. People always overlook it, but it's like the most important step. Make a ticket and sign it. And you know, Shibata had this had the notes yesterday how to how to report. There's stuff in the wiki that will tell you that it's it's really simple. It's just red mines, not like rocket science. Uh, if you don't hear back from us from after a little while, uh, definitely uh, ping us on the mailing list. Or if it's not, you know, some cases like maybe you don't need a ticket, like. There was an instance recently where uh, we needed, we really needed a, re a release, and so uh, Aaron just like sent an email to the team, was like, "Hey, what are you doing about this? Like, is anyone planning to do a release?" And then they're like, "Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Like, OpenSSL has this weird bug, and like, it's seg faulting on Heroku every day. Like, please just release it." Um, affected a lot of people, so it was really like it's a really great step to just like send an email, ping people, ping the right people, and you know CC them or whatever. And you can easily do this just by sending an email to rubycore at rubylang.org, uh, and you don't even need an account or anything. I'm pretty sure it just goes right through. Uh, yeah, so I kind of touched on this. Uh, if, if it's specific to like a feature or uh, you know something important, add an agenda item to the meeting, and you know tag the ticket that you set up. Or if you don't have a ticket, like I've put questions in there before, like something something, and you know I didn't attend the meeting because it was like 2 a.m. Pacific time, so I missed it. But I I got a nice little feedback, and you know in the meeting summary that was like, oh yeah, you know someone talked about this. This is how you do it, whatever. Uh, and that was great, because I didn't have to like bother anyone with an email. I just like put a one-line thing in there, and they're like, oh, OK. We can talk about that. It's on the agenda. It'll just take up people's precious time. And, and last but certainly not least, uh, Nobu. He's like the key to everything, and especially in Ruby. Like, if you have a question, just ask him. He probably knows it. Uh, so yeah, if all else fails. Those are your basically like four pro tips to bottom line contributing to Ruby Core. Learn Japanese, avoid doors with signs, and ping Nobu. Onward and forward, I want to talk about the roadmap. We're almost through this thing. I'm doing great on time. Uh, so I talked a little bit about the wiki. I've been kind of cleaning this thing up. Uh, there's certain stuff that like doesn't quite belong or it's like misguided, it's hard to find, it's buried, whatever. It's like no one really wants to work on this thing. It sucks. It's like, you know, it's a wiki. Like who wants to deal with that? But it's actually super important and anyone that goes to the issue tracker should be able to find like exactly what they need and all like in relatively quick succession um, for the things they want and the things they want to do. 
I'm going to keep working on bringing you know more people onto the team, doing th things like you know this talk, for example, and getting people uh, to understand how how we work as a team, and so that they can better contribute and help us out. Uh, that kind of covers that. And eventually, I want to retire <laughs> someday. <laughs> so that's why we need everyone here to start contributing. So. You know, my job's a little easier. I can work on other stuff, such as RDoc. You probably don't uh, even realize you have it on your system, but it's super important. And if you install a gem, uh, you probably like opt out of the documentation, but you shouldn't. You should install it. I'm telling you right now. I know it sucks and it's really slow, but I want to make that. I want to improve that. Um, definitely starting with with Rails. Now that I have commit, I am like fully focused on making the API docs better and easier to find what you need and differentiating between public and private API because Rails has some funky stuff that they do with private methods and public methods that are actually private and blah, blah, blah. Um, so working on that, the speed thing, uh, it's really bad. Like installing Rails takes like 30 seconds to install the documentation. That's ridiculous. It shouldn't take that long. It should be like, you know, instant. Um, it's just some files, like how long does it take to download like five, five megabytes or whatever. Uh, maybe it does take 30 seconds, I don't know. <laughs> no, there's definitely some improvements we can make there. Uh, and the internationalization thing is really important. So uh, one of the other committers recently added uh, support for this in the source. So you could have inline translation, not inline translations, but you could have translations in a similar way that you would have translations in a Rails app. Like you would just have a folder with you know your translations and you would tag a method or something. So our doc, our doc uh, finds out you know about this method and picks up the translation the language you want to you want to use um, and we're trying to get that out in like the next major version of our doc uh, but it's definitely it's it's definitely like almost ready um, and then as we eventually have to start writing docs that's the hard part uh, we do have Japanese and English docs um, and we are working on improving that sis that situation uh, which is great uh, Shibata has put a lot of work into this. Um, the Japanese site recently got a facelift and looks something like this, which is much better than if you look at the uh, English RDoc generated output, um, which I've been working with someone to try and get them to redesign the pages because it's like horrible looking and like really hard to find stuff. Uh, someone did recently go through and make all of the pages really accessible for uh, like for blind people so that they can uh, reason about the documentation and find methods and do searches and stuff and it'll like you know it'll read it out to them or I'll do all that awesome stuff for people that you know want to want to learn about Ruby and can't can't get there. Um, I kind of been playing around with this idea, uh, having a contributor site similar to Rails. Uh, so sometimes in like some of my slides I have like, uh, and I think Koichi has a, sl a slide where he does uh, like Nobu's patch commit like count. And so I wrote some like scripts stuff like it, using the git gem I think so that I could uh, like find out you know who had the most commits last week or stuff like that. And I want to like, we basically could build a similar site to this um, which would be great to see Nobu at the top of that thing. And you know, like five other people. But you know, we're, we're going to get there. And like, this is the things that I think are important. There's definitely other stuff that people are working on that are super important. You know, performance improvements, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, let's let's work on it together, and let's let's work together to make Ruby awesome. And I'm Zach, and thank you so much. Any questions for Zach? Hey, Zach, um, you mentioned about people not installing RDoc and the, that you don't want them to. How do people actually make use of RDoc on their local dev machines? There's two ways. You can run a local RDoc server, which will load the documentation dynamically and serve up the pages for you. Just load up the, it in your browser. I think it'll even open your browser for you or something. Uh, but there's also RI, which is command line, um, which is great. Uh, so 
if you're, you can also use it like if you're in IRB already. Uh, so you just type like help and then like the constant name and like the method or whatever, like an instant method, and that that'll like load up the documentation basically in like a less and let you like peruse around and stuff. It's really great. Like I use it all the time. Oh, thanks. So I think the primary reason people don't use RDoc is that when you're installing gems, it takes forever. It takes forever. Yeah. So and where does it take forever to build rubies with documentation as well? Is there another tool yeah. that uh, will install the RIR doc after the fact, after you so like you know, asynchronously, so you bundle no documentation and then it installs the documentation later? Well, it's not async because we don't have the node technology yet, but we're gonna get there. Uh, I don't even remember the question. That was a stupid joke. Uh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so there is a gem called RDoc Data, and sorry, Aaron, you're gonna have to wait. <laughs> uh, no, RDoc Data is like after the fact thing that uh, compiles the documentation for every version of Ruby and all the core docs, and uh, we use that for like Windows installer because it can't ship the RDoc, and it's it just makes the binary so much bigger, um, so we can install it after the fact. It's really nice. But it also requires like maintenance. Like you have to build the compile the documentation for each version and release it and stuff. Yeah. Anybody else? Aaron, what were you gonna say? <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> Did I get it right? Great. Success. <laughs> well, uh, if not, thanks, Zach.